Hi everyone, welcome to Show It Better. In this video, we're going to learn how to make this illustration in Photoshop using SketchUp as well. So we're going to open our SketchUp model. This model, model you can find it in the 3D warehouse. It was done by uh, this 3D modeler that has some very sick models that I recommend you guys uh, go and check out his page. The link is in the description. And uh, as you guys can see here, it's a very nice model, it's a very detailed model, and it helps a lot to create a beautiful illustration. So what we want to do is uh, first have our uh, image in parallel projection, right? So sometimes your image can be in perspective mode, just as it is right here. But you want to go to drawing and view uh, in parallel projection, so all the lines will be parallel. It will be more of a diagram style image, right? And now, uh, we are going to i have already a scene saved of what i want to do and i want to put it in white line mode and we're also going to turn on our shadows and uh i want it to be not to sunset or not to sunrise and so it can just be very some very subtle shadows and uh, now we're going to go to the v-ray render settings as you guys can see uh the very oh fuck. as you guys can see they're very simple settings we just have the render is in very high quality and the material override option is on so this means that all the materials will be will be the same color the color that you choose some other material that you choose right so i want to use a very off whitish color so it's going to be a very simple color and i want to use a very high resolution right about 2000 pixels wide also you want to turn the ambient occlusion on and we want to export some render elements some render channels or render ids so we're going to select uh, the object ID the, and the, the raw shadows and we're going to just hit render on our computer, right? And it's going to be a very uh, fast and uh, simple render. As you guys can see, the idea of this render is to have very soft shadows. You can achieve those very soft shadows by going to the sunlight option and having a very uh, not so bright sun, right? And after the, the render is done, you want to save it, uh, save all the channels into your folder. And finally, we're going to go to the line mode and click uh, file export the 2D graphic in a PDF mode, right? And we're going to just save this image as well as a high quality image. After this, we're going to open Photoshop and import our renders. We're going to import also our channel IDs, which is going to be our raw shadows our uh, object ID and our PDF line mode. And you also want to adjust the size. As you guys can see, the line mode is a little bit off. So you just want to have it very precise. And after you guys have it very precise, we want to uh, modify the base render. As you guys can see, it's very dull, it's very dark. So we want to go to the adjustment bar, go to color balance, and raise the blue blue notch a little bit up, and also add in a brightness and contrast adjust, adjustment layer, and turn up the brightness a little bit up and the contrast a little bit up. As you guys can see, the difference is very notorious. Now we're going to go to our lines layer, and with the paint bucket tool, you can select G on your keyboard. We're going to color all the green spots where, where there's grass or parks, etc. And we're just going to paint it in in the white in the line layer because the line layer has those lines and it recognizes those uh you know those limits right. Now we are going to separate the line layer from the green layer by pressing Control Shift J while having all the green selected. After you have done this, you want to put the green layer in multiply mode so the shadows can be recognized as well as you guys can, are seeing on screen. Now our line layer, we want to put it in a 20 to 30% opacity. We don't want the lines to be too notorious. We want it to still have that render, render styled look. And yeah, we want it to be in a very soft shadow. And with the raw shadow layers, we're going to press Control i on our keyboard and it's going to invert the shadows and that's going to permit us to control the shadows in a very different way 
Now we're going to add uh, some outlines to the building and you want to create a new layer and uh, press B on your keyboard for the brush tool. Select a hard black brush and we're just in a 2% thickness. We're going to outline the most important things you know, of, of our project of or, or of the building as you guys can see here. You can do this outline in Illustrator or in Photoshop, whichever program uh, you manage best. I do it in Photoshop, but you know it can be easily done in Illustrator as well. There's no problem. After you guys have finished doing the outline of the building, we want to go to our brushes and select uh, a person brush. You guys can download my brushes uh, for free in the description below. And we are going to paint a lot of people in, you know, in the urban scene, right? We're also going to go to our brush settings and act and activate the dispersion mode. This is going to make uh, for every time we paint the brush, it's going to paint a lot of people, right? So we don't have to click person by person by person it's going to take a lot of more time so we're just going to activate the dispersion mode and that's as you guys can see it's painting automatically in a random mode uh, a lot of people you want to increase the spacing so they don't look too cluttered up uh, and that's it you just want to start painting them all over the scene people always uh, make these illustrations a lot better they just give them a lot of life and they give them a, a sense of scale to the image Remember that all these things you guys want to do in a separate layer in case in the future you messed it up or you, or you want to do some changes. You want to do different layers so you can have a, a better control of, of every element in the project. We are also going to go to our grass layer and we're going to right click and click on blending options and we're going to add in, and we're going to add an interior shadow. This interior shadow is going to give a little bit more depth to the image and a little bit more outlines and shadows to to the whole overall image. And finally, we're going to add some speech bubbles uh, more of a cartoonish way uh, so we can uh, describe the most important characteristics of our image right so as you guys can see here the speech bubble is done with the marquee tool you can do it with a square tool there are various options of doing it and uh, I'm using a font that's called Bebas New the download link is in the description you can download it for free in the font.com so I'm just going to describe you don't want a lot of speech bubbles just about, just about two or three it really depends on your image and on your project uh, you just want them to describe the most important characteristics of your project. Like for example, the urban tower, the pedestrian bridge, uh, the subway entrances, and the parks in my case. So as you guys can see, this is, this is a very simple process to do for this image. Uh, remember that uh, one of the, the most important things are the outlines of the building the the soft shadows and the subtle colors right so we only have a white the green and the black colors we don't have too many colors in our image and that gives it a very easy to read mode if you guys like this video uh, please press the like button or subscribe to our channel comment down below what other video ideas you would like to see and uh, i'll see you in the next video bye